this video is all about an early game uh, cool steam vent tamer. Um, I guess let's talk philosophy first. So a lot of people uh, collect the water from these by using weaselworts to cool them down, and that's actually not a bad way to go because weaselworts are you know basically free to operate if you have the phosphorite. Um, but weaselworts are also you know a valuable resource. You can use them in other places in your base, and maybe you don't want to tie them up with this. Um, also, in the long run, I guess it's not sustainable. If you look around in the forums, you'll see that basically everybody else does it by cooling down the steam in some other way to condense it into water and then pump it away. I don't think this is the best solution. I think going the other way about it is much better. Um, I'm, instead of doing that, I'm going to heat up the steam and then use it to feed a steam turbine. The steam turbine gives you some of the energy back. Before the end of this, I'll talk about um, what that energy balance is like and why I think it's better. So I picked out a steam vent. Um, it has uh, about four and a half kilograms per second output when it's erupting. I'm going to just start putting in, um, okay, what that means is since I'm using a steam turbine to process the, to process the steam that comes out of it, and one steam turbine can do two kilograms per second um, of steam, then I need three steam turbines in order to eat all of the steam that comes out of this. I'm doing the roof because that's where the steam turbines go and I can count out how wide it needs to be. So that's five, one, two, three, four, five. That's two steam turbines. One, two, three, four, five. That's three steam turbines. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to offset it a little more. Because I'm going to put an aqua tuner and I want the aqua tuner to be almost center. So I'm going to put it right there. Um, so this will be the room that, well, I'll put the steam turbines in there so it's a little more obvious why I made it this way. Ah, see? Um, so this is, I'll enclose those, and I think there's oxygen back there, so I don't need to put them in any other medium. Oxygen, right, alright. So those are the steam turbines that will eat the steam from the cool steam vent, and this room will contain the steam from the cool steam vent. Um, the source of heat will be an aqua tuner, and I'm making the aqua tuner out of gold amalgam, which is an early game material. And I'll make, um, I'm going to use insulated pipes, and I'm going to make them out of igneous rock. I'm going to try, I'm going to run the pipe mostly not in the room of steam, and that's just uh, because it's not, igneous rock isn't a perfect insulator, so I'm kind of trying to keep it out of the steam room as much as possible, although honestly it probably doesn't really matter. I'll make, um, I can, you can make the cooling pipe out of, I guess, anything. I'm going to make it out of copper. Uh, so I'm running the pipe through the room of steam turbines so that they, they stay cool. Um, what I'm doing right now is I'm making a loop, a cooling loop, that will run coolant around in a circle so that uh, so, so that the aqua tuner can run whenever it needs to. Um, the way I'm setting this one up is to keep it uh, is so that the coolant, which will be water in this case, will run in a loop constantly even when the even when the aqua tuner isn't running. Uh, in order to do that, I need to by I need to bypass the aqua tuner while it's off. Uh, my way, I, I'm I'm going to do it this way, just like that. Great. Um, this into the loop, um, since since we're going to be cooling down that water in the loop, there needs to be a way for the water to exit the loop when it gets too cold. So I'm just going to put in a liquid pipe thermosensor and a shutoff just to grab out any bubble of water that's in the loop uh, that gets too cold. Uh, let's see, what's next? So, alright, this part of the loop, basically, because of the way it's set up, I need some kind of a buffer in order to contain really only like 10 kilograms at a time. You could use a reservoir for that and do something like this. Oops, good enough. Um, so that so that the loop stays full of coolant all the time, uh, but it's really sort of overkill. We really only need a buffer space of like 10 kilograms. There's a simpler way to do that, and so maybe you're learning this for the first time. If you just take two bridges like that and put them sort of over each other and you connect both of the inputs together and you connect both of the outputs together, then that acts as a buffer space for one 
bubble of liquid. And that's sufficient for this loop, I think. I guess we'll find out. So there's our coolant loop, and when things get too cold, there's an exit. So this pipe emits nice cold water. Um, the other thing we need is to handle the hot water that's produced by the the steam the steam turbines. I'm just going to connect all of their outputs together into one exit pipe, and we're going to need to uh, replenish the water that's in the cooling loop so that when cold water comes out, we put warm water in. Uh, so I'll redirect. I'll direct some of the water, some of the hot water that comes out of the steam turbines into that, just like that. I'm inserting it after our buffer area in the loop. And that's that's important so that uh, if there's so that we use the buffer first before we add water to the loop. Um, so any water, any of the hot water that isn't that doesn't go into the loop, we just gonna I'll just eject it out this other pipe. As a result, we will get two pipes leaving this uh, the build. One of them with hot water at 95 degrees, and one of them with cold water at 15 degrees or less. Um, I kind of like to do it this way. You could mix them together and you'll probably get something like 70 or 80 degree water. Uh, but I, I just find it really useful to have cold water and I can go use that for cold things and then hot water which I can go use for hot things. Let's see, what else, what else do I need in the plumbing? I think that's it for the plumbing. I'm going to connect the power since I think everything I need power for is already set up. I have a wire coming in from the rest of, from the, uh, elsewhere. I have it connected to some hydrogen generators. And, um, this isn't a self-powered build, so, uh, you'll need to use some external power. Let's see, what else do we need? We need some automation. Um, I'm going to tell the liquid shutoff to eject any bubbles of water that are less than 15 degrees. Since the aqua tuner decreases the temperature of each bubble of water that goes through it by about 14 degrees, uh, that means that um, any bubble of water that's too cold to go through the aqua tuner again will get kicked out of the exit pipe. We also need something to control the temperature uh, like when the when the aqua tuner turns on and off, um, for that actually first let me show you let me explain some of the things about keeping the aqua tuner cool. So I'm going to put just a little oil in the steam room. Let's see. So there's 200 kilograms. Oops. Oh wow, that's very confusing looking. I'm going to pause this and just clean that up. All right, there we go. So just use a little bit of oil, just enough to cover the bottom of the steam room. Uh, I just dropped 200 kilograms in there. Now, this is important. Uh, one, one thing that it does is it keeps the aqua tuner cool. The steam that's in the steam room won't interact quickly enough with the aqua tuner for it to stay cool while it's running, but the oil on the ground will. The maximum temperature of this uh, this aqua tuner is only 175 degrees because it's made of gold amalgam. The other thing that the oil in the steam room does, if that's all you needed to do, you could just you could put the aqua tuner in a little well and just put a little oil in there and that would be sufficient. But that's I'm also using the crude oil on the bottom of the steam room to transmit heat right and left uh, through the steam room. Um, and I'm going to facilitate that also going to add some temp shift plates, which I think you can make out of, I mean, if you have diamond, that's fabulous. Use diamond. Um, but you can get by with something like copper, which has a, let's see, well, it has a thermal conductivity of 4.5. So like copper or iron is pretty good. Um, gold isn't so much. Uh, and you can get by with that. So I'm going to space these three tiles apart. And the reason is because their job is to transmit heat from the oil below them to all of the spaces, of all of the steam that they're in. And uh, so this, this temp shift plate can reach three, these three tiles of oil, and the next one can reach the next three tiles of oil. That way I cover the entire uh, row of oil. Now I'm going to put in the automation that turns on the, uh, 
the the aqua tuner and I think the best place I see I've got a couple of some things in here already um, I'm going to abuse a dupe to, uh, to there we go to take that stuff out uh, so I'm gonna I'll put in the automation for the the aqua tutor now I think and I built this one a little differently than I did in my experiments I think I'm just going to put the no actually I'm gonna put it over here so I'm going to I'm gonna put the, uh, the thermo sensor over there and the idea is um, the reason I placed it there is so because I want to make sure that the heat from the aqua tuner heats up the oil enough for this side to be heated as well and not just like right next to it and I think this will give me a more even distribution of heat. I'm also going to use a buffer gate on this and that just prevents the aqua tuner from turning on and off real fast a lot. I'm going to set it to about 10 seconds. I think the plumbing is all in. Um, there's, I got some water. <laughs> I cut away for a minute uh, and got some water in the pipe but that's not important. Alright so the way to start this thing up is to put water in the cooling loop. And that means, um, since I'm in the sandbox, I'm just going to make some make some water. And I'll just insert the water in right there into the cold loop. Great. Now I think it's, I think it's ready to run. Um, see, I'm seeing a bug with the... Uh, oh no, I didn't set this up. So I want to keep this... Uh, I want the aqua tuner to turn on if this is less than 130 degrees. I chose 130 degrees because st because steam has to be 125 degrees in order for the steam turbine to process it. So the goal is to heat up the steam to 125 degrees, and using 130 degrees gives us a little margin. All right, we'll watch that go. So as you can see, the cooling loop of water is just running around. The aqua tuner is using it to heat up the oil which is it's getting closer to where it needs to be. All right, the, um, the cool steam vent is turned on before a bit before we're ready for it, but it's close. It might just all work fine. The steam is mostly hot enough to go through the steam turbines. I think it's all working. Yeah, everything's working great. So let's have a look at the plumbing. The hot water is coming out of the steam turbines and it's it's sort of loading up this pipe so that there's some full bubbles of water that are on deck to replenish the cooling loop. We don't need we don't need the input pipe anymore. That that was just to help get it started. Um, when bubbles of water get cold in the cooling loop, get too cold, they get ejected out through that pipe, just as you can see. We'll have a look at the temperature, it's 11 degrees, and the hot water is 95 degrees. Oh, I see our the cool steam vent is done. Um, so the cool steam is done. <laughs> The cool steam vent isn't erupting anymore. Um, the oil is warmed up to, it's a bit hotter than I really in, meant it to get. It's about 135. Um, the temp shift plates are warmed up. Uh, they, they carry a fair amount of heat as well because they have a high mass. Now, now we're watching it at full speed here. Um, one thing to look out for is if the, the cool steam vent gets um, over pressure, but that's not a common problem for this setup. Um, if you have a cool steam vent that emits a lot of steam, like something like, you know, 10 kilograms, uh, then you'll have to make this room much wider to accommodate more steam turbines. Uh, you'd need five in that case. And I'm not sure, but I suspect you might start having trouble with overpressure because it takes too much pressure to move the steam from the cool steam vent to the other end of the room. Um, if that happens, uh, probably an easy fix for it is to just make the steam room a tile higher. Or hmm, for 10 kilograms, maybe two tiles higher. Alright, so the benefits of, of using this setup is you get, you get all of the water. You don't have to operate a liquid pump, which is 240 watts. It's fairly significant. Um, you, uh, most setups don't give you nice cold water to work with. 
at all. Um, in this case, you get to keep all of the coldness that your aqua tuner is producing, and it comes out this pipe in the form of cold water. Um, it generates power, but it's not, it doesn't generate enough power to be self-powering. Um, it only uses primitive materials. I guess I mentioned that already, so it's something you can do in the early game once you have this stuff researched. Let me show you my notes, and I'll give you all of the all of the statistics for this. So this setup, um, the hot water comes out at about 95 degrees, and the cold water comes out at about at about 14 degrees. You get a bit less than 20% cold water, and uh, and about 80% hot water. So this build produces power, but it also uses power. And on the balance, it uses power. Um, it's hard to describe in a quantitative way how much power it uses because it's different for every you know steam vent. Um, the best way to look at it is how much power does it use per kilogram of water that it generates. And uh, that amount is uh, 44 joules. Well, 44.46 joules per kilogram of water. Um, for the sake of comparison, a water pump uses 24 joules for each kilogram of water. So if you were to imagine this as a big, complicated water pump, it would be like a water pump in the game um, uses 240 watts to move 10 kilograms of water. This one would use something like uh, 480 watts to move 10 kilograms of water. I'm not sure if that sounds like a lot, but if it does sound like a lot, remember that every other build that I've seen uses a water pump to move the water out. So that's already 240 watt of power use. Uh, it only leaves another 240 watts for the entire rest of their build. I'm not sure how they're managing to do the cooling, but I bet it costs more than 240 watts. So as far as I know, this is the most efficient cool steam vent tamer. Well, for the early game anyway. I made a late game version of this that uses thermium and super coolant, and it's a beast. It's For one, it's self-powered, so you don't need any external power, and it turns the steam into ice. All of it. I'll make a video of that next.